and I would make that the windward end, okay? So that it doesn't get opened again until you take the tunnel apart, right? You can do that with sandbags, staples, or make a trench and bury it, you know? But attach it so it's not gonna move, okay? Then on the other end, attach something rigid to the plastic, something long and rigid, okay? And this only works as long as you can have one thing that you can lift up and down. So you can't do it for a 100-foot row, but for like a 20-foot row. We were going to actually demo it on the, um, the charred row over there, because that's about 20 foot or something like that. Okay, you have a rigid holder for your other end of plastic, right? You take two pieces of rebar, and you drive them close together, so close that your rigid holder just fits down into it. You slide it down into it, and then you take something. I've thought of a clamp, or it could be rope, or something, and tie it off so it can't get pulled back up. That'll go really fast. Romex. My wire, remember? Yeah, the wire. Yep. That'll do it. Yeah, it just has to be, you want it to be able to come on and off easily. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Piece of Romex. Yeah, yeah, mm. fast. On and that's off the wire easy. from your house. Yeah. You just the wrap it around fat, yeah, one whip and it, it's yeah. gone. And then that'll really speed up the opening and closing operation. Yeah. You're wrapping it where? Thank you. You're wrapping it around the two. You could take a piece of PVC. You're wrapping it around the two to keep it from sliding. On you know, you got the thing going down in it, and it can't and move this way, but it can still like be pulled up and off. Greenhouse so you wrap something around so it can't be pulled up and off. Yeah. Oh, oh, and just get maybe, someone yeah, on the other yeah. end, you know, Sections or not, and just flip it over. They could. You could play with that. It might work. You know, it's just like please experiment with that and share the information. So the high side is on the windward side. Harry. Yeah. We have yes, to make exactly. a stop on the way home. That's by the way, when you, something for the if you're putting road cover uh, on in the fall, that. as you're leading into winter gardening, you may not say, I'm going to put road cover on and not get to it, right? And then along comes a huge front, right? And it's going to get bitter cold. Guess what? You're out there to entertain your neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> because that cover is going to be blowing all over the place. And you're going to be a really good show. Now, I do this less than I teach it. When I do it, though, I feel so sad. <laughs> and my neighbors don't even get to see what I'm doing anyway, so it doesn't matter because I'm a half a mile from them. But, but the squirrels are really impressed. Yeah. Okay. Because what I do is I put the row cover on the windward side, and I roll it up on a nice, calm, sunny day when it's nice to be outside. I roll it up so it looks like a rope, and I put a few staples over it. And then when that bitter storm is coming in and I don't even want to be outside, I go outside and pull the staples off and the wind blows my cover over my, my oh, that's <laughs> And you know, you can gamble. Lots of times the wind will keep blowing all night and you don't even have to tie the other side down. <laughs> you know? But if you, if you don't want to gamble, then you put a few staples on the other side and you got it. You know? That is the way to get ready for, the, for a frost. You know? um, my joke is that the, most people's first um, defense against frost is denial. <laughs> you know? And it is a, re a ready defense, but highly ineffective. <laughs> Not to be relied on at all. You haven't, you haven't pulled these road covers up yet at all. Not yet, no. We're nowhere near these. And that's no. greenhouse plastic? The temperature's yeah. going to have to go well below 20. How long does it I mean, last? 25, if you even think about it. And for kale, I don't, Rocco. Five years. Okay. Where's yes. Rocco? He's right here. Yeah. I wouldn't pull these covers over it with for a 25 even would you, below 20. I'd probably wait till it's getting around. I'd 20. wait till the covers for like hard, hard cold. Yeah. Low 20s, teens. Yeah. yeah. Is when I'd wait for the covers. Now on something like lettuce, you might do it a little. On sooner. something that's yeah. a little more tender. But for the, the really hardy it. stuff, you don't even have to wait. You know, you, a lot of you, I assume, are going to be doing mixed beds, so you'll you'll start pulling it on at 25, or unless you're going for for maximum growth, you pull it on at 39. Are these die But if it's kale and collards and stuff, 25 is fine. Yeah. This is Diane who I said I'd be done at three. <laughs> yeah, that's sure. right. Rocco, can you talk for a few minutes while I do, while I do this? Take them to the next place and show them. Show sure. Them the turnips. The turnips. We looked at the turnips, didn't we? So how long, how long and how many you of you can show us the, the newly planted ones? I think okay. that's what How long does it take you guys to do this? To, to do this? Yeah, to get the cover off and then... To set it up or to harvest? No, no, no. No, to cover. Like, so, like, to, if you had to put the floating row cover on. Open it, pull the cover. Is the turnip one of the stars? Two people, if you got all your stuff, could do it. Half hour per row? Yeah. yeah. This, you're looking at a 150 foot row here. Hey, Pat's right, you know, like the problem is like it's, it's oh man, it's getting cold and then, oh, well, well, well. and then you go out there to cover your stuff and it's like 30 mile an hour winds and it's already freezing and you really don't want to be there. Yeah. And you're holding in your road cover and you're looking at your other one and it's over there flapping in the breeze. 
Um, so try and avoid that. But if you can avoid that and you have all your materials aligned, it takes just as long. Like the greenhouse that Greg built, like it took us just longer to build it than it did to just cover it. It's the same thing here. You know, you got to get your your weights, you got to get your supports, get your plastic out there, make sure it's all not kinked up and then cover it up you know you're looking at a half hour or so let me ask, let me ask you a question why have you ever tried to do it on the outside yeah why does the floating roof ever have to do it why you don't do it on the outside is because it would be much harder to pull it up over the hoops than across the plants yeah okay and because you have a high tunnel right and if you pull it over the plants low to the ground you're capturing more of the, of the thermal heat from the soil and you have more dead air space and if you pull it up high, it's just like you get one less dead air space and more convection. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to actually get more heat loss. You know, it's not as effective. It's an actually not a double cover that way. It's just like a yeah. single Yeah, right. It's cover. like a thicker row cover. Right. Okay. You know, you don't get the space in between, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So that's why. You definitely want to separate, a significant jacket. separation between the two layers. And you definitely want your, um, the cover, your white cover to be as close to the plants as it can be. The white is also reflecting, is radiant, is, has a, radi a radiant effect, right? The heat's coming from the soil and the white reflects it back. Right. So the closer it is, the more it does that. They're all subtle effects. They're not huge effects, but it makes a difference yeah, when you that. add them all up, you know? Now, really for some people like Elliot Coleman, he has to have hoops within because he can't take the chance of any damage inside. And that's fine, go for it. I got no problem with that. What do you mean? Hoop. In other words, he's got a separate little low hoop inside that the white fabric goes over. Yeah. And it does make it, if it's low, it makes pulling a little easier. Because here they can catch on little crook nooks and crannies in the, in the vegetables, you know. But to me, it's just so much more work and so much more material. And this works fine. I mean, have you ever tried it with the hoops inside? No. Has anybody That's... ever tried that? Somebody try it and tell me what you think, you know. try it. Okay. Try it and see how you like it, you know. And, um, you know, I was I've been I've been proved wrong many a time before, you know. Yeah. Just the work of getting out here and taking all those bags off. It's like off half and, hour. It's going to take you know. half, mm -hmm. a whole day almost, or half mm -hmm. a day mm -hmm. to get this all yeah, uncovered. Well, see, we hardly yeah. do. We just open up the harvest, you know. Okay. Um, we yeah. might take it off if we had a huge snow event coming because it would crush the it's not. It's not if, if we had a... So if we, we had a week in the rain, a week us. in the winter when it was so going to rain all week and be mild, we might open up and let them breathe and get rained out. But by and the large, they stay on. You know, it is, no, it's, we cannot afford to take these so on and off. Like <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not going to happen. What you know? about watering? Well, to uncover it once it's all set up well, really isn't much of a big deal. We could actually that? turn the drip back on <clears> if it was a warm time. We probably won't. You walk down, put your bags to the side, get to the end, freeze, put it over here. No, it's, okay. it's so essentially it takes. Yeah, it essentially yeah, takes we as long. It, yeah. We could, we could turn it back on again. But I mean, there's, it, there must be dips in places where it's. Oh not. no, it, it'll probably get yeah. some ruptures. Yeah, yeah. we get some okay, ruptures. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, no, we we're not magical. Yeah. Record yourself. I'm gonna uncover this. How do I how do I record it? What do I do? Just point it at yourself. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else do it. Okay. What are we taking? I don't, don't want to get that close to me. <laughs> what are we doing? Oh, well, uh, uh, duh, folks, yeah, baby white turnip. So you, you eat the turnip eat? greens, too. Okay, I don't, but, but, but what I was, I was going to say is that seven top turnip is a green only. Yeah, and it's a great taste. And, great, and, yeah. and yeah. we have, it's completely uncovered and it's growing like hell in yeah. our place right now. Yeah, no, it's true. It's a phenomenal. It's absolutely wonderful, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Seven top. Yeah. She um, didn't take, but she's actually, yeah. She's something else that I'm not, I haven't mentioned. Um. This could be a stronger structure if we simply took a stake and drove it in on the end, took a wire, wrapped it around the first hoop, pulled it tight to the next hoop and wrapped it around, did that all the way to the far end and then staked it tight on the other end. Yeah, and we would make a wire purlin and that would give it much more strength. Even you know? Yeah, whatever you use, you give it more strength. You what? Know? what? Every bit of structure you add increases its strength. You know, you want to go further, you get some lightweight material, maybe bamboo or whatever, and use those wire tie, concrete reinforcing ties, and give it side purlins, you know, or top purlins. I mean, you can make this thing really, really strong. It's just how much time are you going to put into it? And if you're small, put lots of time into it, you know, because you're not having to do that much of it. If you're at our scale, you know, Tom was just saying, just the thought of having to uncover and cover these makes them tired, you know? I mean, if we're going to spend well, all our time it's, building structure, it's, it's going to, you know. And that, and that real cold night, 
when we have to cover this or when we have to use the white uh, the reme and it's going to be real windy you make sure everything's tight and secure like like that's a day you know it's not a whole day but that's it takes that's time. hours yeah. yeah yeah it all adds up yeah. now how do you get that over the turnips if it's on the outside of the that's not supposed that to be there. wrong that's a mistake oh, okay <laughs> good question that's a, that's that a total mistake <laughs> i wasn't here and somebody that, wanted an easier <laughs> job and they said let's just put them all <laughs> over already and leave them there so here's one yeah. where you could double hoop it now just, you know so you can well but no it's still too high you know you, you wouldn't want it that high first one. Right. you know okay yeah I mean, if you could shove those down in deep enough and put another hoop on, you could do right. it. But oh, yeah, right, right, right. no, we'll probably just pull that up and yeah, pop it over. And, you know. Next what maker, weight you know. Oh really? What <laughs> weight rope cover? Yeah. We just yeah. using summer weight here, and it's fine. <laughs> Inside there, you know, heavier weight will give more protection, but it'll give less light on the days you don't have cover. Yeah. You know, I put. That's why I used to love rays because you can go in there and get every weight you could imagine. They had pieces in there were like baby blanket. Wow. You know, yeah. and I mean, for some crops that would you know really give them protection. Things like watermelon radish that can get some freeze damage and make them look kind of like water damage spots on them. I loved having that heavyweight fabric, which I can't find anymore. I'm sure it's out there, but I bet it cost a lot where it was really, it was really cheap. One time I got like a hundred foot piece by eight for free because they'd use it to cover the concrete with. They said, oh, you can just have that. I said, okay, if you say so. You know? And you ran away fast. Yeah. <laughs> well, I gave them a lot of business and I sent them a lot of business. You know, so. I mean, you know. How long are those wires? Those wires are the same length as one of these because we. These? How we cut the wire was we took one of these and took the wire which wants to be in a curl and got it to go along this and then cut it. And then we used the wire to cut the rest of ours. You know, trying to measure that wire out straight when it wants to curl is a pain in the butt. Let's see how long it is. Put it on the ground as tall as you are. It's 72 inches. Huh? It, that's specifically no, it's not. Is. That ain't 72 inches. <laughs> 84 maybe? 96? Okay, we're we're getting two offers here. It's either 96 or 70, 84. I think 84. Oh yeah. No, 96. 96. Okay. We're carpenters. No, I agree now. I I agree. Not a carpenter, but I agree. When I do this, yeah, 96. 96. 95 and three quarters. There we go. But those, those Watch out for, way. by the way, wait, <laughs> hang on. You know about slivers, right? Huh? These are, this is fiberglass. You get nasty slivers if you grab this wrong. Okay. I won't slide. Okay. The wire is cheaper than that. The wire is cheaper than that and more readily available. Okay. You know? And why do you do that? Um, the store easier. Um, they don't have to be cut. They probably will last longer as far as not kinking out at the bottom. They have their advantages, you know. Um, the, the ease of storage is huge. That wire is a pain in the butt. They're rigid. Yeah. Rigidy. Rigidy? Yeah. They're stronger. Yeah. yeah. But their ability to flex out more of a natural art kind of stick. They all have their advantages and disadvantages. I tend not to remember to order them when the guy's coming, so I tend to use wire. The wire I can go buy it as much as I need whenever I need it. So if you don't have a guy coming, where do you where would you buy this stuff? Um, well, the guy coming is Seven Springs Farm Supply. You got to send to them and say, let me know when you make a delivery here, and order it through them. It's not cost effective to get them any other way because the shipping will kill you. You know, they go from being a buck something. Were they a buck? What a buck? A buck fifty or something? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there you go. What's that? So when you go to Virginia, make Floyd run. You're right by Floyd. I can do that. Yeah, so you can talk to Tom and maybe get these guys. They're kind of neat. I mean, to me, their best advantage is their ease of storage and carrying. Mm -hmm. Try to carry an arm, you know, an arm yeah. full of those wires out yeah. to the field. Yeah, right. You know, it's a pain. Try to carry these out. If you got gloves on, it's no problem at all. If you don't have gloves on, it's a pain. Patrick, if we made a tunnel over these two rows that we could walk down the center, what what changes would you make? Would you um, still have row cover over the? No, I wouldn't have the row. I wouldn't have the plastic over them. I'd have the row cover still, but not the plastic. Yeah, but the plastic would be over those. Yeah, the plastic would be the one big piece. Yeah. Know? I wouldn't bother with the plastic in the rows. No, 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 no. Because I'm not trying to show off. But then you can walk. But if I did the have the plastic in the rows, I could show off, and things would grow even better if I managed it. You know. But yeah, no, I always Thank prefer. You. By the it's way. Great to see you. Much as I like the tunnels, I take a greenhouse over a tunnel every day of the week. I mean, the, the tunnels are a pain in the butt compared to a greenhouse, you know? 
make yourself a greenhouse and go to the tropics whenever you need to. Will the kale grow in a Smell greenhouse? Smell that soil, you know? Will the kale? See those things grow. Watch those little bugs popping out, you know? Stand up and stretch when the you're getting kale, your greens, will that grow you know? in the greenhouse? Take your coat off, you know? Yeah? Um, definitely, you know, the tunnels are more production. You know, the greenhouse is the thing to go for. That's you know? what I'm doing. Do we have any questions related to winter growing that I haven't covered? I guarantee you I'll think of something as soon as you all leave. <laughs> but that's why you have to come back next time. Yeah. Um, for yeah. aphids, I had uh, kind of a gray or brown Okay, great. Aphid. You know what? I want to give more time to aphids. Okay, good. The gray aphid is much easier to deal with. The ladybugs alone will probably help you solve that. Also, do that farmscaping I talked about. You can also use soap. Soap killed your gray aphid, right, Harry? Oh, Harry's on the way out. So, Harry, yeah. soap did kill the gray, the black aphids. They just kept coming back, right? Yeah, the, the same, I, it, was, it, was, it was over with so quickly. Yeah. I, I mean, it was just stunning. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that leads me to one of my favorite facts I love to share with people, and that is that they have photographed aphids giving live birth to aphids giving live birth. Oh! <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my God. They do parthenogenesis, and that means they don't do sex. They haven't got time for it. They're too busy eating your plants until they decide it's time to move, and then they do sex, so they got different genetics for the next place. You know? So their whole strategy is reproduction. And that's why this time of year, even though I'm a huge farmscaping fan and have great success with it, I can show you the C-Mac ladybug and stuff and why we're still okay, because C-Mac is still not dormant. But as time goes on, C-Mac is going to go dormant. And then you get aphid, aphid blooms because their reproduction rate is from 10 to a few hundred thousand in no time, you know. And without those predators that keep them in check, we would be buried in aphids. We would live without nothing but aphids. We wouldn't be here, you know, there'd be nothing but aphids. Um, so you need those checks. And in the winter, you have to use something like soap in that situation. Safer's insecticidal soap are the, the larger, if you're gonna save money and use a lot of it, you go to CPS and get MP'd. And know that soap does not work if it doesn't dry. So do not spray it out and then decide to water your plants because it won't work. Don't spray it outside in the rain because it won't work, you know? Um, What's the thing that they say that's a, that's a mycorrhizae or something that goes, that controls aphids or something? It's in the Bavaria. Soil? Bavaria, no, mycorrhizae will not in the soil. Will not, but Bavaria is a fungus that feeds on insects. Okay. And you can buy it, and it is kind of effective. But the thing is, if conditions are right for it to feed on aphids, it, they're right for it to feed on ladybugs, too. So I'm not a big fan of it myself. And I probably need to be set straight by an expert on it because I don't know it that well, really. You know? it, 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 it's something like Bavaria. Richard, you know how to spell it? Or, you know what I'm talking about, though, right? Yeah. 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 It's something like B-E-A-V-A-R-I-A -A -A or something like that. And it's a fungus that feeds on insects. And it's, it, it has been effective, but you need perfect conditions, the right humidity and everything, and then it's not specific. It's not like it goes, oh, there's a good, there's a good um, C-Mac ladybug and those are those bad aphids, I'm gonna, it infects them all. They're all just, you know, feed stock for it. You know? I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard, Okay, you know, instead, get ladybugs. I, I don't know. You can order them until you get people to get the people who have the problem, get theirs, you know? I mean, there's a synergy here, you know? I mean, you know. See, Rime actually makes it harder to control aphids because the predators can't get to them, you know? Several weeks ago, you still had some predation. It was just like they weren't in there, and all of a sudden, one day we went in there, and they were. That's how it is, yeah, yeah. But what you would do is hit them with, hit it with soap and release ladybugs. We only release a couple at each plant. What kind of soap? Safer's insecticidal soap. Um, I've used Bronner's. You can use Bronner's. It's not legal to do it. It's not legal. But the EPA will never know. You know, you're not allowed to use anything that's not a registered a registered um, pesticide. New outlaw. Um, but they don't. They, I mean, they actually don't. They actually even admit that they're not going to enforce that. You know, on a homeowner. But a grower, they catch you. You get in trouble. You know, the MP to work and the Safer's is not vetted by Omri, whereas the MP is, you know, so. 
somebody told me a grower was telling me there's a relationship between ants and aphids like ants yeah there is i talked to you about it after this but probably it's not a you they know eat their waste. They, they, they eat their yeah. waste that's why so ants like yeah. come yeah, in the, if you have ants and they'll defend they they'll yeah. defend the aphids yeah yeah so do this horned leaf poppers I've been getting on my sunflowers. I don't know what they're called. They defend but aphids? They, they look kind of like a small thorn, hmm. and but they're yeah. leaf hoppers that <laughs> look like a thorn. Hoppers, they're and they're definitely doing the aphid thing. Oh, huh. I never heard of that before. So I kill them, and then the aphids are pretty much gone. Huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I have to hand pick them. Hmm. Any other winter gardening questions? You mentioned the greenhouse being so good, but what about the harlot, killing the harlequin bugs in the spring? Is that an issue sometimes? Yeah, no, we'd have to work harder in there. We'd have to search them out. Take yeah, the crops yeah, out, search them out. Yeah. yeah, that's true. We won't be able to do that. We won't, We could do that, but we won't. It's too much work. Yeah. We could raise the walls in there and fry everything in there too, but it ain't happening. Those, those walls come up and down once a year. You know. Uh, but yeah, that is an issue. Do you put new plastics on each year? No. 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 It's up? best practice to do that. I don't do it at all. What comes up and down? The sidewalk. Sidewalk. Okay. Yeah. So could you, yeah. if you had ones that you could remove the whole thing, you could freeze them too? Yeah, you sure you could. Yeah. yeah. You can do so the same thing. You could have a greenhouse where you could do that. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. yeah. You know, the thing is, we're usually eating out of that greenhouse until by the time we're done eating, they're out of there. They're, they've moved out into the world. That upside of that is that your beneficials are going to head start in the greenhouse too. Uh -huh. If you farmscape, your greenhouse is your incubator for your beneficials outside. You get lots of beneficial insect plants going. They're going to be perconid wasps, surface flies, all those things are going to be booming in your greenhouse. And on the nice days, they'll start moving out. You know, Some of them are going to get burned because it's going to get cold again. But you still are upping your, your levels of beneficial insects early. Yeah. What's our ideal culture on the carrots you mentioned? That was hard for me to envision. We got carrots over here, but we're going to go look at them. Um, and there's a bit of a debate because we put tunnels over them to get them to grow more. And we even set the fabric up. And Juan said, um, one of our co-workers said rightly that if we get it too hot in there, we're going to lose the sweetness. So we're venting them, and it's my gamble that the nights are cold enough now, and with the venting, it won't get too hot, and we'll get more growth. I mean, if we had time, I would have harvested some carrots for the salad, because they're spectacular. Mm -hmm. you know? um, so and, what's the time, best time to plant them, September? Um, no, no, no. For carrots outside, I would get them in in, in late July is when we okay. put them in, I think, yeah. yeah. For, for a fall Yeah, a yeah fall I mean, you harvest. just keep them through the winter, you know? Mm -hmm. You can plant more, but they're not going to be ready until Depends sometime on the the next I mean, year. There's some that'll you know, come I plant. I do succession. <laughs> 60 days. My, my first you know, and there's some fall that, that goes well into winter carrots you know. would be late July, mm -hmm. and then plant I would just keep doing successions August, up until probably them, about May. now. I wouldn't do it much later than now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're ever going to do anything before they bolt. That's about it. All the salad greens, all the um, lettuces, yeah. the baby white turnips, man, you can do no endless successions of those. That's know? awesome. Beets, I'd have them well, in by now or not do them. Mm -hmm. um, radishes, you could do successions. You know? Depends mm -hmm. now. Good Some of the radishes that are fall radishes, you're you getting know, close to they won't get done before they get the, the vernalization and the, the white and they'll start to bolt. You, know? you can still eat their seed pods, they'll be good. You know, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't be eating the radishes. Um, yeah, so pick the ones that work and grow those. You know? My favorite winter radish is watermelon well, radish, but I find that if you like don't a get that in like that or like, sometime in mid, like, by yeah, mid-September, like I just do it. But I love it when it comes in, boy. It's I mean, do you have soil radish. on the ground? Or? It's pretty, it's sweet, it's hot, it's juicy. I love that sweet hot. I'm a big fan of this. I can't take that. so hot that it gives me indigestion. And then but so I like that hot that's just a greenhouse. little hot with a sweet boy I so like a raised bed. And, and then it's gorgeous too. It's a winter. Yeah. I think it's a touch late yeah. to go outside yeah. without any protection. Yeah, I would direct seed outside um, those winter hardy lettuces, arugulas, tatsoes, um cilantro. You know, cilantro is really really hardy. Soil in spring, February, yeah. March. <laughs> they they'll be very slow to come on. You probably won't eat them in the spring, but they'll get going. This is my personal opinion. Mosh, I think it's a touch you know? too late. Like out here, it's um, a touch too late. If you can just put row cover over, it'll be a huge you know, difference. It's not behind it. Huge yes. difference, you know. And the baby turnips. If you get the too. baby turnips, they will get wiped out by deep cold, but they get going now. But you would have to give them protection to get them to come in. You know, the miner's lettuce. You know, just use a little row cover if you're not going to do the plastic. But if you can do the plastic, you'll be cranking. You know. Okay. Um, and it's, it's not that hard, really, you know. A small piece is a piece of cake to do it, you know. Any other questions? Do you flame your weeds? We do flame, when, yeah. Uh, just in the spring? 
No, I mean, actually, we're gonna, there, there's a bed in there we're going to flame. We're going to put planet direct seeded to kale, and we'll flame it. But you don't, flaming what is, is what you do is you, I flame only to stale bed. I think people think they can control. Stale bed? Stale bed, I'll tell you what it means in a minute. <laughs> people think that they can flame to control big weeds or wasting their time. Control big weeds with the hull. What flaming is for is particularly useful for a process called stale bedding, where you get your bed totally prepped, right? And then you let it go stale. You don't plant it. But you do treat it as if you have planted it. You even use row cover, you water it regularly. And what do you do when you're growing weeds? Mm -hmm. You get all these weeds up till they have their first true leaf. And then you come in and you turn a flame around, which is a very hot torch, and you walk as fast as you can. Those are and a little past. They would still die though, still because die. they're because yeah. they're um, gallon soga. Yeah. But you walk as fast as you can with that flamer and it doesn't burn them. If you burn them, you're frying your soil. It boils the water in their leaves. They turn a slightly different color, and when you press them, you leave an indentation, and they're dead. And now you've done no soil disturbance, and you've just withdrawn a whole lot of seeds from the weed seed bank. If you do that a couple of times, you'll hardly have to weed your carrots, mm. you know? Um, if you really ace it, before you plant your main crop, the day before you plant a little bit of seed, and when that comes up, you do one final flaming. But if you're flaming when the seed is in there, don't stop, don't slow down, keep moving, or you'll kill your seed. Rocco can tell you about the first crop of parsnips he tried to grow. Yeah. I mean, you know, he just walked a little bit too slow, and there weren't no parsnips. There were about three, I think, weren't there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Fire-hardy parsnips, you know. <laughs> um, but if you just walk good and fast, you can really clean a bed up, you know. But that's pretty expensive for a small enterprise. No, I mean. No? You can, if, you, if you're not going to get a backpack flamer, or if you're going to make your own back flamer like Ben did. Ben? Uh, ben, ben. Ben and Cedar. Uh -huh. um, you can do it for 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, you got a tank and a, and a cheap torch. I like the backpack, that's a couple hundred. Mm -hmm. the, um, you, if you don't get carried away and flame everything all the time, the propane's pretty cost effective. You know, if you're flaming acres and acres, you'll spend a lot of money on propane. You know? But I think it's, I think it's, I love it for carrots and things like that. If you get your flaming right, carrots are a whole lot easier. You can save tons of time, you know. I mostly do it for slow germinating seed, you know. That's about it, you know. Yeah. How wide do you plant when for the size of Depends on the crop. For the baby white turnips, I've grown them so that if there's one growing here, one growing here, one growing there, I can sow them so thick that one could be growing on top of those two, and they all come in. You just thin them, they keep coming. Lettuce, I almost always give lettuce. If I'm not doing cut and come again, really close together salad mix, at least six inches. I sometimes prefer eight. Um, the bigger brassicas, like rutabagas, I do 15 inches. Well, actually, rutabagas, I do 10. Kale, I do 15 inches. Though you can do 10. You can do eight. It'll work, you know. Um, radishes, of course, as close together as you can get them. Arugula, as close together as you can get it, kind of, you know. Pea shoots, they're touching. They're on top of each other. They work great, you know. Um, it just depends on the crop. And then along with that, the, the width of the actual bed so they don't get too close to the um, cover? Um, like two feet? Or, I mean, no, nowhere near. Feet. There's maybe a, a 10 inches feet. there, and that's good enough. It's all about where this curves, 10 you know? Inches from the, okay. Yeah, it's all about where the, where the wire curves, you know? And so you can play with that, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know what? If a little bit gets too close, it just has a hard time. I like the way that's you have all. your um, drip and then it's in the center too. That's kind of a double drip with the stuff in the center is nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of a single drip. Yeah, we like to. Yeah, we, we went to double for a couple of reasons. I like but, it. Yeah. Any other questions? Because you're putting the plastic on and what? your drip tape, you're not using your drip tape? No, uh, we, how, used, how it, we you, used it last week. How are they getting the water? Do okay, you? we soaked it really well last oh. week. Okay. Uh -huh. And the evaporation rate is really low. Mm -hmm. And when it rains, it gets wet in the in the paths. And years ago at Highland Lake, enough. I thought I could cover beds with plastic and I'd be able to work them even if it rained. No, 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 no. Dry soil, wet soil, what happens? Right over. You know? the, the roots go over. No, no, the water goes over. Oh, okay. You know, capillary action. Right. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. you can't do it. It doesn't work. Try to keep a bed dry when it's raining. If it's really dry out, we'll have to water somehow. Well, probably if it's really dry, we'll wait for a warm day and get the drip going again, probably because it'd be a pain to take all the covers off. Mm -hmm. But, like I said, give us a week where they say the temperatures are going to be good and warm in the winter and it's going to be raining, we're going to open the whole thing up and let it breathe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we like letting, you know, yeah. We don't like having plants under plastic that long, you know? Yeah, the plastic isn't a, a 
cure all. You know, you gotta. It's like I said in the greenhouse. Just, just always keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on your logistics. It's good to let it breathe. If you can catch the rain, if it's gonna, if it's gonna rain and then be sunny and warm, let that water in there. Um, snow and everything too. I, uh, I got remade. The first time I ever had remade, it was right over there. I had like 50 feet of broccoli, and the plants were this big, and the heads were this big, and. It was like the cure all. I was like, oh, it's under remake. I don't have to worry about it. Oh, everything's cool. And I went to go look at it. There was so much moisture in there. It's probably plastic. Probably wasn't remake. But anyway, all the heads. could be, could be plastic. All the, all the heads were rotten. Oh. It all rotten out. Uh, I was asking so, more about that. Like, because there's no, a lot, not a lot of air movement. Do you have like fungus or rotting? Not, not really. Not if you maintain it. Not if you keep your eye on it. But I don't want that to happen to you guys. Just don't think keep of it as a cure all. That's the Just, name of the game. Keep your yeah. eye on it, you know? That is definitely the name of the yeah, game. Yeah, just keep an eye on it. I mean, you can also like, I sp I don't use BT hardly at all because I have so many beneficial. We have so many beneficial insects here, mm -hmm. yeah. but this time of year, beneficial insects aren't around. So you got to, you know, if you got to cover over it and it's not deeply cold, those caterpillars are gonna you know, come in. You'll look and you'll have a lot of frass and not much plant, you know. So you need to, you know, keep an eye on it and use BT if you need to and just do what you need to do. You know? What's frass? What's frass? Frass is, is um, larva poop. Oh, oh that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got to see my ladybugs be born this year. Aren't they amazing? I had brought a bunch of egg cases uh -huh. from elsewhere and like tied them in at yeah. the same level as where I found them in this yes. field that had many, many of them. Uh, and I think that's a, a nice warm day in May. Praying mantises. Praying mantises. Oh. Praying mantises. Oh. And, yeah. and they're still out there. Yeah. They were still in the field as of a few days ago. There's a huge one. Red is grabbing. Oh, yeah. You know, you don't want to bring in more than you have. We'll just cut it and yeah. put a little extra mulch there. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could. Usually you do. Usually they show up. But once you got them, you don't want a lot of praying mantises. They're a keystone predator. Is there a break there of her or something? Um, is there a reason right, for this? Normally this extension. Right? It's, it's an extension. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to avoid that. You know, that, like a, that was like... You probably initially put it in here. It was originally here. We got it. And I got to take a handful of them there. Because if you leave that drip there and after the mulch and plants have been on it, like, you can't yank it. You can't pull it any closer. You know? I understood it correctly. They come out butt first. You know, that one little hole. And um, and so I took a little handful of them and took them in a hole under under the uh, row cover. Just got to watch them grow. They're pretty amazing, yeah. They're the, sa they're the sacred insect of the um, South African bushman. And you can see a million different websites where you can watch them. Be praying mantis. Oh, praying yeah. Not real <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When's the next one? <laughs> yeah. um, the next one's bread. Bread oh. baking. Oh. We're going to use that kitchen. We're going to use that <laughs> with I, fired oven. Can I come and try reproduce your normal bread making with raw bread making? <laughs> yeah, you can, well, I don't know. I don't know I can teach you much, but if you want to be there, I'll tell you whatever I can. But I probably won't give you a lot of time to... That's whole class time. I'd have to give you individual oh, time. Oh, yeah, no, I know. I'm just thinking I would watch what you're doing and try to see if I can recreate it. Okay, sure. Yeah, no, it's fine by me. Yeah, yeah. And how do we get on your email list? Um, if you have emailed me about this class, I have your name. But if not, let's get a piece of paper going. Also, I was hoping those that are willing, um, I think I left that notebook up there. But if somebody's got a, some pages of paper they can hand out, I'd love to ask a few questions. Oh, yeah. Um, if you could just do a little survey. Yeah.